on this show about alien existence, also on planet Earth and from other planetary systems. And of course, they have advanced technology, but how is it used? And is it used by the deep state elitists, so to speak? Well, um, there's not a lot in the public about this, but yeah, I think so. I think it's definitely um, it was introduced um, and it, all the way back since the 1950s, uh, governments have been using alien genetics and alien technology um, in conjunction with substance poisoning. Yeah. What they call that benign thing, which is not benign. So, yeah, they've been experimenting with people all the way back. Now, it was the USSR that created anthrax using alien genes. This is in the study. I don't make it up. It's exactly what what it says. It's, it was in PubMed. So in PubMed, they talked about alien studies, anthrax being alien. From where? How? How and where? Well, all it says, it didn't say much, but all it says is that the USSR created anthrax using alien genes. Now, it doesn't say how they got them. So your guess is as good as mine. Could have been a crash. It could have been some negotiations. But I mean, alien could also mean foreign, couldn't it? Just from somebody from another country or what? Or do you think? Yeah. No, no, not like that. No, it wouldn't be cross country. It is something that doesn't exist on our on our um, on our scientific charts. It's something totally not just foreign from another country to country, because humans, the DNA in humans is is universal. It's this, it's pretty much the same. Um but this is alien that doesn't exist on our charts. It was introduced. It came from somewhere. It was introduced. They use the word alien. I think it's alien. <laughs> um, I can tell you one thing. I can give you some inside information. Um, years ago when I was, um, I was hanging out in Marina del Rey in Los Angeles with these, um, the hackers, the original hackers who built the internet. And they were fighting to make the internet public, right? To, to make it in, to keep it in the public domain. And there were some white hats involved in this from the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency. Now, as far as I understand, they have highest security clearance because they're dealing with um, alien technology. And so I sat down with these guys. One guy is like an 80 year old physicist and he was giving me all kinds of inside information. And it was- Was yeah, that, was that when you were living in, you were in Los Angeles studying to become an actress or what, or what, and what? And how did you even get to know those people and be in that company? Um, through synchronicity. You know, and that's actually how I met my ex-husband is like, we both knew the same people and we were invited to the same parties. and. So they had, you know, they had an office in Marina del Rey. I'm still in touch with these people, you know, and there was about 1000 hackers um, who were in this community before Anonymous was established. And some of those 1000 hackers had built the Internet. They were consigned by the CIA, hired by the CIA to build it. And then when they found out that it was going to be used for military purposes, they said, uh-uh, this technology is too important. It has to get out to the public domain. And I know that the DIA had a hand in that because they are able to, they have technology they could foresee things in the future. So they just told you that over, a, well, a drink or a shrimp's cocktail or what? <laughs> well, I wasn't, I, I didn't have alcohol back then, but um, I was like, yeah, I was. I never got into drugs or alcohol like my whole life. I've just been very puritan. Well, then, love... freshly squeezed juice. I mean, what? I mean, what? Uh, how did I... <laughs> the point is that they were just telling you that at Marina del Rey? Um, well, basically, my ex husband and I got together at that time, and this um, a friend of mine who was in the DIA. His father was in the DIA, and he was in the office, and they were warriors, you know, fighting to keep the internet free in the public domain, open source. Well, he said, we, um, I've got a friend in the DIA who wants to meet you. He's, you know, an old physicist and he's been there since the beginning. And so we got all excited. I thought that might be interesting. We could learn something new. And so he came out to meet me and my ex-husband and it was a very unusual interaction. I mean, he was, you know, when I asked him, how old are you? He sat back and he says, well, he says, I'm not really from this time. And he would say weird things like that. Uh-huh. Really? I know. 
Wow. And I did it was like, at the time it was, I was in my early twenties. It was like right over my head. I was like, what, what does that mean? I was like trying to, and for years later, I would think back and try to make sense of what he said. But yeah, I think, cause I asked him if about the time travel, you know, too. And at that, well, that, at that point I was asking about, well, you know, does time travel exist? And he said that he went through it twice. So that could be connected. He went through what a time travel portal yeah, twice. And he had two time traveling experiences, which eventually uh, landed him on the timeline where you met him at Marina del Rey. And, uh, and, and I mean, in that, in uh, so w w where was he from? What timeline? Do you know? D did you ask him that? Oh, no. He wouldn't say. He wouldn't say anything more. He was just. He sat back. He was very mysterious, and it was kind of creepy a little bit. And did you sense that he was? Um, speaking the truth that he was being honest or just putting you on no i felt he was telling the truth at one point he leaned forward and he said now i want to tell you something very very important this was after two weeks together and i'd say most of the stuff went over my head but later i have it like kind of like an elephant memory and i was thinking back about the interaction many years later and trying to you know as i got more knowledge and piecing things together but one of the things he said he leaned forward and he said now this is very important he said, we don't know. And he starts, his hands start to shake. And he's like, we don't know what the future for humanity will be. We haven't been able to go that far and see. Um, because apparently the technology, they had this time travel technology. They, oh gosh, where do I begin the stories? Okay, so um, they had, you know, Nikolai Tesla, Einstein working on the same um and a few others working on like they hired the most like intelligent minds of the time to work on time travel and to see how far they could go with certain technologies and they did find a way to time travel and then the elites or the you know came in and stole the technology and broke everything up well according to p a lot of uh, researchers and people who have looked into this einstein was part of it he was kind of CIA based really wasn't he uh, that's at least what a lot of people say and Tesla was kept under the radar and taken out of the history books and of course they stole his material we know about Trump's uncle who was there for a week taking all of his material when he died in 1943 but they also talk about the Philadelphia experiment of course with the time travel uh, experiences there and that was Tesla technology huh yeah so yeah, it's all connected. I mean, we, we talked about that too. He talked about that. And he said that, you know, they, they stole the technology and they threatened these guys never to speak um, about it. And then, um, but the DIA has a department within the DIA, which is the highest, has highest security clearance. And apparently that guy had highest security clearance and they, they knew all kinds of stuff, but he um, said that, that basically the bad, the bad guys had you misused this technology at Area 51. So after they stole it, they took it to Area 51 in Nevada and kept developing it. And they misused it and they busted a hole open in the time space continuum is what he said. So with that hole, they were not able to go past a certain date to see what would be the future fate of humanity. So he's shaking and he says, we're either, he says, we're facing two possible futures. He says either the, the total enslavement of mankind or our collective enlightenment, he said. And we honestly don't know which future is coming. And I mean, he was like teary eyed and his hand shaking. Could both of these possibilities, these futures be the truth if you look at two different timelines if we talk about parallel universes in a multiverse uh, for example that on one timeline we are being enslaved and on another timeline we are we are being enlightened and, and awakened from this amnesia and this madness i think it's happening simultaneously because uh, scientists just recently discovered that there are two Earths coexisting, sharing the same space. A lot of people say many more. There could be, but they, they had instruments. They, this is just mainstream, you know. They have instruments that measured um, two Earths, and one is the one we see. It's this vibratory frequency. You said, they said that there's another one right here that's a higher vibratory frequency. 
So maybe that can explain why some people go into an enlightened state and their body disappears or how the prophets were able to go from Jerusalem to Mecca and back again in one night. Yeah, but that could just be a story like so many other stories in those old scriptures, maybe, written in code. Well, I, I believe in scripture. All of them? Um, well, I've had so many personal experiences with things that, you know, like for, you know, I have entered Samadhi, which uh, the Native American medicine men, they told me that's entering in the death where my body was disappeared for two hours. That's when I was 17. But previous, before that, when I was a child, I used to, to skip out into d deep, deep, deep meditations where my heart chakra was just like vibrating this love. It was so overpowering. I'd, I'd go out. Do you remember this from when you were a child? Yeah. Yeah. Two hours later, I would, you know, the sun would move in the sky and I'm still sitting in the same place. So I was, this was happening to me throughout my lifetime. The last time that, that it happened, I was um, 17 years old. And that was quite dramatic because I was already an adult and I, my physical body was gone for two hours. And this was, um, uh, I had a witness who was my Qigong teacher. So it's, it was, you know, kind of documented. I wasn't the only one, you know, experiencing that. So so, so you weren't taking any um, drugs or what they call herbal medicine, ayahuasca and uh, magic mushrooms? Yeah, um, no, I wasn't. I was completely sober. They called, the government's called, uh, the, C, uh, the DIA told me that's a shamanic way. Yeah. That, that, that they call it in their, in their books, it's a shamanic way of going through. They have technologies to enhance a human being and to push them through. And they use them um, on their own agents to increase intelligence and to to force that life force energy up the spine, which it enlightens the, the brain. But with me, it happened naturally, shamanically. Also when you were a child. Yeah. Yeah. So this is why I've always been a deep seeker and why I, you know, when I would have a chance to talk with an insider in the government i'd be like ooh, ooh, give me more you know and so i've always been seeking for the answers because i've had the personal experiences and i've also had vis many visions um and that's what attracted me to scripture because i was like whoa you mean other people saw the same thing and it's written in this book and i gotta read that you know so this is like where i come from <laughs> but do you think that you could maybe possibly have been part of um an experiment as a child maybe to be programmed or to be enhanced s sensory enhancement or something or even under mind control i don't know if you know that if you could have been under trauma-based mind control you just said i'm not suggesting anything about your father but you do say that your father was a mind control deprogrammer and did uh, um, have a lot of uh, people w working with a lot of people who had been uh, subjected or to uh, satanic ritual abuse. Right. Well, my father is very, an you know, kind of anti-government like me. So we are real freedom fighters. And, um, you know, I don't think if, if it's possible, um, I know that the government was uh, following me, has been following me since I was a child, because um, I had a friend who was an insider and was able to look at my files and said that I have a file like this thick with the FBI. Why? That, that is very interesting. How can you can you support that uh, claim or how can you explain more? I can't really support it. It was just somebody I knew who was an insider and told me this and said, what did you do? And I'm like, I don't know. But I mean, I've been followed my whole life. And the strange thing is, is when the DIA approached me, they asked to meet me and my ex-husband. Um, they seemed to act like they knew me. Like they spoke to me like they already know me. So that could be why those people, those and this time traveler and everybody you met at Marina Del Rey with your husband, um, that you even, you know, enter, you, knew, you even was in that company. Yeah, yeah, it's part of it. I can tell you an interesting story. Um, 
there okay i think that they were, were were white hats working with the galactic federation if you ask me and i do believe there are benign forces in the universe um there is even a higher hierarchy above the galactic federation which is called the universal council and these are geneticists they populate worlds the galactic federation is like a police force they're interested in using their technologies to save species on worlds that are being attacked and subjugated by the fallen so you 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 do believe that there is an uh, a galactic or some people call it the intergal the intergalactic federation of light absolutely i know so. consisting of different alien species in this council yes and earth is one of them we're the 83rd the 83rd Yes, there were 82 species. Even Paul Hellyer talked about this. There's there's 82 species in the Galactic Federation. Earth is the 83rd. And I believe the Pleiadians are part of it too. Um, what I know, and based on what the DIA, this, this physicist told me, is that the governments were approached first by the benign um, aliens or ETs. They're, they're other beings. They're not really, there's, the Quran calls them jinn. They're just made from fire. They're made from a different substance. Humans are made from clay. We're all different, right? But we exist. You can support us by clicking onto our website, ageoftruth.tv. And please like our videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for notifications. You can also sign up for our newsletter on our website, ageoftruth.tv as well, so that we can notify you every time we have a new show out, either on our primary channel on YouTube or on our alternative channels on BitChute and Brighton. And please subscribe to our channels on BitChute and Brighton as well. Please follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. Your support is greatly appreciated and very needed. On behalf of the Age of Truth TV team, we thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.